My heart is still racing. I can't believe it. I actually pulled the trigger on two boats and sunk them. My friends always asked before I left to go to war if I could carry through with it and shoot someone if I had to. Well, dad answered dad, and I wasn't even a question on my mind at the time. They were shooting at me and my allies, and it was gonna come down to us or them. That's how I rationalized it. Anyway, the mission went as planned. The helicopters landed and unloaded the troops. They went and made some quick scavenging work. I wonder if they'll be able to tear the whole plane down and reassemble it at the nearby airport. Once I landed here at Sochi, they had me park right to this, uh, right next to this Tu-22. The moment I shut down the engine, the soldier that marshaled me ran up to me and gave me a letter. It was orders for the next mission. The letter read, That was great work you did with the escort of those helicopters. Your next mission is starting immediately. Once you shut down, you will be getting fuel. That Tu-22 on your right is being loaded with an anti-ship missile and is going up to take care of that large cargo ship in the bay next to the downed Eel 76. Take off behind that Tu-22 and stay on his left wing. You'll be part of the escort. There will be a tornado joining you as well. The refuelers came up to my aircraft just as I finished reading the letter. They unbolted the 120-gallon wing tanks and proceeded to top off my internals. They said I might need the additional airspeed to keep up with the Tu-22. I looked over to my right to get a better look at this flying beast and... Well, it said to easily outrun me. Okay, I see their point. The engines on that thing are larger than my saber and it has two of them. During my admiring look at the size and complexity of the aircraft I'd be escorting, the ground crew for the Tu-22 showed up with his ordnance, a single KH-22. My eyes widened and my jaw dropped. This missile was impressive to say the least. It was a little more than four feet longer than my saber, and it weighed one, uh, one, uh, <laughs> and it weighed more than my saber did when it sat empty on the ramp. The KH-22's warhead alone was uh, two thousand pounds, and it flew at Mach four point five. I can barely break the sound barrier, and I have to be in a shell of dive to do so. This was, without a doubt, an absolute monster. On the back of the letter from the base commander was a small picture describing some of the stages of the flight of, t of the missile will do. In bold letters at the top it said, Don't get in its way. I was told this KH-22 was set to fly in the upper trajectory flight path today. The flight plan will be the same as for mission two. This is Relic One standing by. We'll follow the Tu-22. Relic 1 holding short. Relic 1 is going to active runway.
Copy, Sushi Tower. Relic 1 will climb 3 0 0. Wheels up. Flaps up. Relic 1, stay in formation with the TU-22. After departure, the TU-22 will maintain a holding pattern around the airport until they see that you're airborne. After that, they'll proceed along the flight plan. Keep him at your 3 o'clock position. You'll be climbing to 17,000 feet at 450 knots. Copy control, 17,000 feet, 450 knots. I do not have a visual with the two... Wait a minute, there he is. I see him. Doomsday to Relic 1. We see that you're airborne. Proceeding to waypoint 1 now. Copy that, Doomsday. We are moving to form up with you at this time. Relic 1 on station. Away. Affirm. Relic 1, turning back to base. This is Doomsday, all aircraft RTV. Tower, Relic 1, request permission to land. Tower.
Republic 1 affirm.